Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last few episodes, we learned about how to import a CAD file in Revit. Use that CAD file as a reference in order to create your Revit model. Today in this episode, we are going to talk about how to bring in an image file or a PDF file, scale it properly and use it as a reference to build your Revit model. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start by importing an image file. Just like CAD, we have two options of importing an image file. Either use import image or link image. I like to do link image because using the managed links, it's easier to manage your image files across the project. However, if you use import image file, it's the advantage is that it becomes part of your project. And if you want to send your Revit model to someone, you don't have to separately send your images. So depending on your purpose, you can either you, you can choose import image or link image. Um, the process of importing remains the same. I'm going to start with link images and go ahead and choose an image file. You can choose any of these uh, different file formats for your images. Use BMP, JPG, PNG, or TIFF. I'm going to use a JPG file format for this tutorial. And I'm going to place this here. Now, before we can start using this as a reference for building a Revit model, we may have to ensure that this is as per the correct scale. So the best way to do this is to use a reference plane. Let's say we know that the inner dimension of this room is 14 feet. So I'm going to create a reference plane that marks the inner face of this wall. To zoom in and ensure that it falls in the correct line. I'm going to copy this and put it somewhere here. Ensure that this also falls into the same inner face of this side of the wall. I'm going to create a dimension. This is about 31 feet 2 inches. I would like to have this as 14 feet. So let's scale this up. I'm going to select both of these reference planes. I'm going to press Ctrl and add the selection of this image file as well. Let's scale it up. The base point as the part of the reference plane. The destination point. So this is the old length. And the new length, I'm going to type it in 14 feet. So now this has been scaled to the 14 feet length. Also see, take the reference plane here. Yes, and let's go ahead and create a dimension which looks as nine inches. So we're almost correct here. Now we're ready to create a Revit model on top of this. So let's go ahead and create a wall. I'm going to create a nine inch generic wall for this purpose. And change the thickness to zero feet, nine inches. And I'm going to change the location line to finish face exterior and change the height to level 2. I'm going to trace on these lines. Don't rely on these lines in, when you're working with pixel data. I would always come back here and make sure that it remains um, the correct dimension as I need. It's because there's always a inaccuracy in terms of scale when it, we are working with spectral data. So I'm going to adjust my Revit model based on the values that I already know. So now this is almost there. Let's go ahead to insert manage links and images. So here you can see the list of all the linked image files that you have loaded in your project. Once my task of taking the reference of this image file is complete, I can come back here and unload that file so to declutter my project. It does not mean that I've removed this permanently. This is only a temporary unload. So later on in the project, if I need the reference of that image file again, I can go back to manage links, images, and reload that again. If you have deleted this image file from that view, it does not necessarily mean that it's removed from your project. You can always come back here, place the instance, again here. Once you delete, you also delete the position and the scale that you've adjusted. So if you are placing a new instance, you'll have to again scale it, again reposition it to where it was before. So com coming back to images, if you remove from here, from this dialog box, it means you've permanently removed that image file from your project. Let's go ahead and delete all of this and try to do the same thing with PDF file. Again, the difference between the PDF, import PDF and link PDF remains the same. I like to use link PDFs because it's easier to manage using the manage links, but you can try 
any of these two options. I'm going to use link PDF and try to go ahead and import a PDF file from here. If you're using a multiple page PDF, you can choose which page number that you would like to import. I only have one page, so I'm going to use page number one. The resolution of a PDF is 300, so I can choose that, or you can choose adjust the resolutions from here as well. I'm going to position this here. Now this PDF file is portrait oriented, so I would like to rotate this one to 90 degrees and then adjust the scale. So let's do the same process, RP shortcut for reference plane. I'm going to adjust the scale by taking these two reference planes here. Zoom in a little bit always to ensure that your reference plane is in the correct position. Let's also create another reference plane for the thickness. I'm going to use the dimensions. If you're printing a PDF to scale, then when you bring the PDF into Revit file, they are also to scale. But if you are printing PDF not to scale, then you'll have to adjust your scale. So let's try to adjust the scale here. I'm going to use all of these reference plane and add the PDF file to my selection. And I'm going to scale it up as from this reference plane to this is exactly 14 feet. So you can see how the wall thickness is also adjusted to 9 inches. And let's try to now build a Revit model on top of it. So I'm going to use architecture, wall. I already have created a generic 9 inch brick wall, which is going from level 1 to level 2. The location line is set to finish phase exterior. So I could also use a rectangle tool and make it somewhere around here. And always use your dimensions when you're working with Revit model and adjust the values as you need. So you can see it's not really matching with the lines, but the, if you work with dimensions, they are as per what you need. So I would always go ahead and check the dimensions that I'm working in Revit model and try to adjust that based on my requirements. So always use your practical understanding, your requirements in terms of vector data instead of relying on the pixel data. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. In the next few episodes, we are going to learn about basics of site design, how to work with contours in Revit. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.